I very much agree that everyone will have AI friends. Um, I just can't figure out whether the AI friends are bundled into existing social networks that in your WhatsApp, they're in yeah. your Facebook, they're in your Snapchat, or they're an external platform. I don't know. I mean, I think it depends on the objective function. Like, I think, again, these AI assistants will be better. Like, Meta is in a good place for this, for example. Yeah. And obviously, we've seen Llama. They're capable of a lot more. Um, I would like an AI that looks out for me, that I control myself, that is with me. Um, because I already use GPT-4 as a therapist and things like that. Um, like, not saying it's a substitute for medical advice before anyone kind of gets that. But there aren't enough therapists in the world. And I can tell it to challenge me or I can tell it to be understanding. And there's no judgment there. Because other humans are kind of scary. It doesn't matter sure. if you're a qualified therapist. And so you see people building these bonds with these things. I think they'll just increase because there's something very human about the interactions because they were trained on the sum of available human knowledge. As we get better and better data, there will be more engaging. And I think there needs to be both. Like the chatbots become really convincing from the companies trying to sell you ads. But I think I would like it so that you have your own one as well. You know? I totally agree. Yeah. And I think you'll actually have many. I think you'll have like a group of uh, different profiles. A group of different friends. Like Character AI has something like two hours a day of engagement for a session because people find this valuable. But then it has the dark side. There was something called, I quite like to call the Valentine's Day Massacre. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> sounds chirpy, man. It sounds chirpy. I know. Yeah. So there was this kind of um, app called Replica. Yeah. And so it was originally a mental health chatbot until they figured out you could charge $300 a year for... Uh, They're doing like 50 million. I mean, I, I don't yeah. have any information or anything, so I'm yeah. just chatting shit. But they have like 50 million a year in revenue, apparently. Yeah, because $300 so. gets you a sexy role play from your chatbots. Wow. Until February the 14th, when they turned it off. <laughs> What's they turned off sexy role play? Sexy role play. What happened when they turned off sexy 68, role play? 68,000 people joined the Reddit and said, why did you lobotomize my girlfriend? On Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, my word. Can you even imagine? And so have they reinstated it? No, I think it's, it was against Apple policy, right? But think about what this is going to be when you have human realistic AI voices, you know, and like all these things coming through and you've got it in your ear. Like, you know, Joachim Phoenix, my girlfriend is an OS. Yeah, I mean, she doesn't judge, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're always supportive or you can tell her to judge you if that's what you get off on. Like, you are married. Be married. very careful about what you my, say. <laughs> my, the thing I like to say about prompting, my wife has been trying to prompt me for 15, 17 years now. Prompting <laughs> is very hard. <laughs> and again, there are so many similarities to kind of the real world, but I think people will have deeper interactions with their technology. And we don't know what societal implications that will have. Like, I don't know if you ever saw that chart in the Washington Post of um, male virginity under the age of 30. No. So in 2008 in the Terrified US, it was 8%. This. Male virginity under 38%. Okay. Yeah. In 2018, it was 27%. 20 <laughs> It's a straight line going up. And so 2008 is like um, Pornhub and the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> but then you're like, what does it do when everyone's got their own chatbots? Doesn't even need to be sexual relationships that again. That is terrible. What does it do to emotional relationships? I, there are so many questions all at the same time. I, I did see the stat, and uh, it's like in the night, I'm butchering it, but in the 1960s, you know, 62% of men under the age of 30 had five or more friends. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, under 18% have five or more friends. 62 to 18%. They, sorry, I'm, I'm going to ask this. Is this a world we really want to live in? I'm not being really like, you know, no intimate physical connections with other amazing people, you know, tossing off with your phone and your porn hub and then having an AI friend. Yeah, Pornhub was actually just bought by Ethical Capital Partners. So the world hilarious <laughs> name, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. The irony uh, of the world is becoming weirder. I think it's up to us now. So when I say it's um, COVID level, in which direction I don't know. You know, do we want to build systems that encourage people to you know that Ready Player One yeah. IOI world where it's like uh, everything like that? We can do that, and we can trap people with this technology. Or we can use it to get people out. Because I don't think it's like Wally, where you have that really fat guy, you know, with a VR headset and everyone lives in their own world. I think people like to share stories. They like to be pro-social. So let's use it to connect people and accentuate physical stuff versus, again, locking people away. I spoke to one of these AI friend companies and they said to me, actually, do you ever had a dog? I said, yeah. yes. And they said, do you love it? I said, yes, of course I do. Uh, and they said, you don't stay in with your dog all day and just talk to your dog. You take your dog for a walk. You use it in the real yeah. world, right? That's the same with AI friends. Yeah, but not with cat ladies. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
what's the future of the sex industry like the sex media industry is like porn hubs dead i have no idea um i think i hope the manipulative practices kind yeah. of get reduced by this and i think you know a lot of people just don't have the voice and then have voices from this as well yeah so again, I think this is bigger than the printing press. It's bigger than anything. And so what's one of the reasons I signed the letter? I said, we have to get this discussion going in public right now. We've got to stop pre-training big models on all the crazy crap of the internet. And like, we've got to do it fast. Because this is coming like a train. 